Hello and welcome to the Illinois Association of Park Districts Parkcast. I'm Wayne Nutterback, Director of Communications and Digital Content, and I'm delighted today to be joined by Laura Danzel, Environmental Education Supervisor for the Vermilion County Conservation District. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to uh, talk with me a little bit about your, uh, your uh, agency and the work you guys are doing. Absolutely. Anytime. Thank you for inviting me. Now, uh, I always start these off by just asking my guest, uh, just to give me a really quick overview, just a brief description. Uh, if someone were asking about your agency, uh, what could you tell us about the Vermilion County Conservation District? We are one of five conservation districts in the state of Illinois, and we are located south of Chicago, um, just east of Champaign, uh, so part of our county borders with the Indiana state border. And we have five different parks across the county and manage 6,000 acres. All right, excellent. Now, uh, one of the things I really love about getting to be a part of IAPD and, and talking with members is hearing about all the unique events that are happening throughout the state. And uh, one of the events that your agency has uh, caught my eye in particular, and that was, it was uh, called Owl Night. Mm -hmm. so I, was, I was hoping that maybe you could just tell me a little bit more about this event and just gonna give me a brief overview and then we can kind of dig a little bit deeper into the subject. Absolutely. We are, Vermilion County is very fortunate to only be 30 miles away from Champaign-Urbana where they have the University of Illinois and also the Illinois Natural History Survey. So we have so many um, professors and researchers and PhD students that come over here and do research in our parks. Everything from box turtles to snakes to brown-headed cowbirds to 13-line ground squirrels to the northern saw wet owl. And the Natural Resources Environmental Science Department of the University of Illinois actually offers a class called Owl Migration. And it's led by Dr. Michael Ward and Dr. Joy O'Keefe. And the students that are in that class come over here to Kinnecock County Park and they set up mist nets and catch the northern sawwet owls, take measurements, scientific uh, data collection, and radio tag them. And we also have here at Kinnecock 11 different telemetry towers that they're able to then track where those sawwet owls are going um, in our park over the course of the um, semester long class. Excellent. So uh, yeah, that's fascinating. So you really have an opportunity. It, it's almost like a, a partnership then with, uh, with the university. Then would that be correct? Is this a, an agreement you guys are working together to, to yes. offer this, this venue to them? How, how did that Absolutely. all come about? So we have an environmental education center here at Kennecott County Park, and they utilize our classroom space to actually teach part of the curriculum in the classroom and then they head out. So it's an evening class, you know, since owls are nocturnal, it's an evening class. They come over um, in a big old like bus that they bring the students over here. And then they head out after they do some classroom time to actually put up the mist nets. They call the owls in and see how many they can catch over the course of an evening. Um, another component of the class is that they have to do a public program um, for the residents of Vermilion County. And so that's where I get to come in and actually work with the students to develop the program, uh, making sure that it is a, you know, a, a, an effective high quality program to offer to the public. And that's where the Owl Night program um, get, got its roots because of that educational component that they threw into the class curriculum. Now, you mentioned quite a, quite a different, a few different types of wildlife. What was it about the owl in particular that that made this uh, a, a good fit for an event? You know, I don't know. That was probably decided with the University of Illinois. Dr. Michael Ward is very well known in East Central Illinois over here um, because of his um, love that he has for, for all things birds. They've even done like whippoorwill studies in our park. So I think it was just a creation of some of the faculty over there at U of I deciding owl migration might be a really great course for the students. And that's how they came about it. Now, do they do any other, any other sorts of uh, classes that involve the wildlife there? Or is this kind of a unique thing in and of its own? This is the first one that's actually had like an educational component added to it where the students had to develop um, an environmental program to go along with it. Like they have to create the name, they create um, activities, 
they even had to give me like all of the public relations media press releases flyers like they had to develop the program from the start to the finish um to, to offer it to the public and it's great to see the college students here in this building like they have one station set up in a classroom where you get to dissect an owl pellet and then there's another uh, station where the students um, are helping the public make and take a craft to take home for like the younger children that come to the program and then they actually do put up a mist net and the owl night that we just had a few weeks ago we actually did catch a northern saw wet owl oh, wow. so those that were here in attendance got to actually see them take the measurements of the bird and they hold the wing out of the bird and shine fluorescent uv light on it to determine how old the owl is um and then they they uh the public also got to witness them putting that tracking device on them and watch it be released so it was it was fascinating. It's one of those moments where, oh my gosh, I cannot believe this is my <laughs> job. <laughs> I get to offer this program in conjunction with the U of I. Um, it was a fantastic, awesome, um, awesome evening, awesome program for the public. Now, uh, speaking of the public, I know whenever any of the agencies in our state do any sort of event, it's always nice when there's the educational element, but there also is interactivity. How, how important do you think it is to have like both of those elements happening at events? Do you feel like you, you need to have a little bit of both to kind of give it the, the most like bang for its buck? Absolutely. So people learn in different ways. You know, there's people that learn by listening. There's people that learn by participating. So when you actually have the kids dissect an owl pellet with their hands, they remember it so much more than just seeing a picture of it. When the kids are able to make and take a craft of an owl home, it's a memento, it's a souvenir to help them remind them of the event. And, you know, then the adults getting to see um, the students tag and measure this owl, you know, the visualization of that is just, it's, it's definitely something that they're going to remember. And uh, a lot of people went home very happy that night, and hopefully it's going to be something that they remember for years to come. So, so what can you tell me about kind of the makeup of the audience that came out for the event? Do you feel like it was a good mix of both young and old? And how important is it to try and draw in uh, that kind of a diverse crowd? So we encouraged people of all ages to come out. We wanted the adults. We wanted um, the children. We wanted everybody to come out to this event. So we tried to make sure that we had activities for all different age levels. And I find that um, you know, adults love dissecting an owl pellet just as much as a kid does. Um, getting in there and like figuring out what the owl had for dinner was great. And the students really did a great job of when they were tagging and taking measurements of the bird to explain it um, in simple terms that not only did the adults understand it, but also the um, high school, middle school, grade school kids that were here in attendance also felt like they, they understood I think also watching it visually happening in front of you while the students explain it um, also helps make that education component even stronger. The other thing I like about this event is that it happens at nighttime. I think it's, it's awesome when you can have an event that is geared toward maybe a little bit of a later time. Uh, it seems a little bit non-traditional as opposed yeah. to probably most, most of the events that happen in, in agencies across the state. Uh, uh, what's that like planning for a night event? How do you uh, how do you make that happen uh, without you know any hitches or anything like that? One of the things that you struggle with as a um, environmental educator and program coordinator is when is the best time to offer a program? And you know you try weekends, you try during the day. Everybody's lives are so busy and so hectic that yeah, sometimes offering things at night. Um, and it was an open house style event. So it started like at 530 and went all the way to 830. So that way you could come after dinner or you could come after, you know, all the kids had their after school activities were completed. Um, but yet you could also go home before bedtime if the kids had an earlier bedtime. So by having a wide range in the evening, um, you were able to accommodate different schedules and the other thing is, is, yeah, we try, you know, we always try to do something, you know, daytime hikes, daytime programs, but sometimes those nighttime, it brings a totally different crowd to the park. Um, astronomy programs, night hikes, nocturnal animals. It's a totally different group of audience that can come out to enjoy the park and, and get that education focus. Excellent. Now, the other thing I really liked about this event that I, when I was looking at it is that 
it just fits so perfectly into the conservation district's mission. I mean, you're, you're educating people on, on owls. You're, you're showing them all these important details about this, this creature that maybe they, they know is out there, but they don't see often. Uh, how important are programs like this to, to help out the community, to educate them? Uh, how, how do you, how do you like, try and gear that so that they're getting like the most up-to-date information that they can get or, or to come away from the event feeling like they've learned something new? Right. So, you know, a lot of the common owls that people know more, of course, is like the great horned owl. And another common one that's here is the barred owl. But not very many people know about the northern sawwet owl, which is this, you know, four to six inch tall owl. It's tiny and small. And because of its small size and because of its nocturnal habits, we as people don't normally get to see them when we come out here to the park. Um, one of the researchers actually sent me some photos and said, can you find the northern solid owl in this photo? I, I couldn't find it because it was so <laughs> small and tiny. And, you know, one of the things about education is we want people to connect to their, their local habitat in our backyard and have an appreciation for it, have a value for it. And the more you can educate them about the cool, unique, awesome, adorable fun creatures that we have here you just continue to make that connection so much stronger and those kids are going to remember hey that's the park where I got to see that saw wet owl um, and maybe they didn't even know that owls could come in that small size and it's yeah it's just a fantastic way of getting people to appreciate our natural world, appreciate that we're connected to it we need to save our habitat we need to be you know conservation minded. Um, so that these saw wet owls have a place to live out here in our parks, just as much as the great horned owls. Now, uh, one of the details I didn't realize when, until we started talking is, is about the connection that you have with the students from the university who, who participate in this and who help guide it. Um, uh, what, how awesome is it to have that opportunity to, to have access to these like bright young minds who are just dying to like get into their craft to start learning their professions mm -hmm. and careers? What's that like being able to interact with you know, these, the folks that could be the next generation of conservationists? It's, um, it's you know, it's, when I do school programs um, with our public schools that we have here in Vermilion County, I remind them all the time that we're still learning so many new things about our natural world. There's constantly being new things discovered and we need these um, bright young minds to, to continue to learn about our natural world because the, the more we learn, the more we know, and the better we know how to take care of our environment and the excitement that they have um, watching, you know, these, these kids while they're measuring the saw wet owl, it's definitely inspiring, not only for me to observe and for the, the student um, or the, the child that's in the, at the program, but yeah, this, the student that's getting to do it is also greatly inspired too. Now, last but not least, um, when someone leaves Owl Night, what do you hope is like the one thing that's in their mind? What do you hope is the one thought that's like the, 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 at the forefront of their mind? You know, I, maybe that, oh my gosh, I never knew that there were owls that small that lived in <laughs> East Central Illinois. I wonder what else is out there that I don't know what other cool, unique species um, might be out there in our forest and, and prairie aquatic habitats that I need to learn more about. And maybe it might awaken this curiosity um, that they have about learning more about our natural world and our, our local habitats. All right, well, Laura, I thank you so much for taking time out of your day to tell me about this awesome event. And uh, do you have a date for the next one you guys are doing? Uh, how often do you do these? So this was our second year um, doing the owl migration class in partnership with the uh, University of Illinois. So I'm hoping that they're going to have us back in 2023. It'll probably be, you know, around the first week in November, maybe on a Tuesday or a Thursday night out here at Kennecott County Park. All right. Well, when you have that date, let us know. We'd be happy to tell everybody about it and see if we can get more curious minds to come out and check it out for themselves. That sounds awesome. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much.